The grand mansion loomed over the neighborhood, a testament to Richard Carter's success. From the vast windows of his estate, Richard often gazed at the world he had meticulously built, an empire forged through tireless nights and unyielding determination. To the world, Richard was a man who had it all, wealth, influence, and a life few could dream of. By his side was his wife, Sophia, whose graceful demeanor seemed to complement the life he cherished. Yet beneath her elegant smile lay shadows he had never noticed. Sophia often asked questions that sounded innocent but carried a weight Richard had yet to decipher. Is this what you always wanted? She would ask softly, her voice blending curiosity and distance. Richard, ever the optimist, would smile and reply, This is everything I've worked for, and it's only the beginning for us. Richard believed deeply in sharing his success with his family. To him, his empire wasn't just his, it was theirs. His younger brother, Daniel, had always been someone he trusted implicitly. Daniel often had access to the estate, moving freely, helping where he could. Richard valued loyalty above all and saw his family as his anchor in a life often consumed by deals and deadlines. But even in a world of luxury, cracks were forming. Cracks that Richard couldn't see but would soon change his life forever. Sophia sat quietly in her car, her hands gripping the steering wheel as she stared at the dimly lit parking lot. The usual elegance in her posture was now replaced by tension. Moments later, Daniel emerged from the shadows, his expression stern and purposeful. Is it all set? He asked, his voice low but firm. Sophia nodded, her gaze darting around the empty lot to ensure no one was listening. He'll be driving early tomorrow for an important meeting. Everything is in place, she whispered, her voice steady despite the weight of their plan. Daniel smirked, the satisfaction evident on his face. Perfect. No one will suspect a thing. The brakes will fail, and it will look like a tragic accident. By the time anyone figures it out, we'll have everything. His words hung in the air, their chilling certainty cutting through the stillness of the night. Sophia took a deep breath, trying to calm the storm within her. This plan wasn't just about money. It was her escape, her chance to be free of a life she felt trapped in. Unbeknownst to them, a young boy named Ethan Walker was crouched nearby, his thin frame hidden behind a row of parked cars. Homeless and struggling to survive on the streets, Ethan had sought refuge in the parking lot that night. The whispers of the pair caught his attention, and his curiosity led him closer. As he listened intently, piecing together their sinister plot, his heart pounded in his chest. Ethan felt a mix of fear and urgency. He didn't know this man they were planning to harm, but the thought of doing nothing gnawed at him. Staying quiet meant allowing a life to be lost, and Ethan knew he had to act, no matter the risk. Ethan watched as Sophia and Daniel left the parking lot, their voices still echoing in his mind. Determined, he decided to follow Sophia, hoping to find out where this man, Richard, lived. Ethan's instincts, honed from years of surviving on the streets, helped him keep a safe distance as her car weaved through the city. The streets grew quieter, the houses larger, until Sophia turned into a gated property. Ethan stayed hidden, his heart pounding as he caught sight of the grand mansion. This had to be Richard's home. He noted every detail before slipping back into the shadows. That night, Ethan couldn't sleep. The weight of what he had overheard bore down on him like a storm. He didn't know if Richard would believe him, a homeless boy with nothing to offer but his word, but he also couldn't let fear stop him. At first light, Ethan positioned himself near the mansion gates, waiting for Richard to leave. Hours passed and doubt crept in. What if no one listened? What if he failed? Yet, he stood his ground. Finally, a sleek car approached the gate. Ethan's pulse quickened. This was his moment. Summoning every ounce of courage, he ran into the car's path, waving his arms frantically. 
The car screeched to a halt and Richard, startled, rolled down the window. Richard demanded, his tone a mix of irritation and concern. Please, you have to listen, Ethan shouted, his voice trembling but firm. Your brakes, they've been tampered with. I overheard it last night, your wife and brother. They're planning to kill you. Richard froze, disbelief flashing across his face. But something in Ethan's desperate eyes made him pause. Wait here, he said, stepping out of the car to investigate. Richard's skepticism lingered as he walked to his garage. He called his personal mechanic, who was already on site preparing for routine maintenance. Check the brakes, Richard ordered, his tone unusually sharp. The mechanic nodded and began his inspection. Minutes felt like hours as Richard stood there, the boy's frantic words replaying in his mind. Ethan, still waiting by the gate, watched anxiously. Finally, the mechanic emerged, his face pale. Sir, the brakes have been tampered with. If you had driven this car, it would have been catastrophic. Richard's breath caught, his world tilting as the weight of the revelation settled in. His wife, his brother, the people he trusted most, were plotting to kill him. The betrayal burned like a fire in his chest but the presence of the young boy reminded him of the danger he narrowly avoided. He walked back to Ethan, his expression a mix of gratitude and shock. You saved my life, Richard admitted, his voice quieter now. Why would you risk so much for someone you don't even know? Ethan shrugged, trying to mask the fear that still gripped him. It was wrong. I couldn't just let it happen, he said simply, his voice trembling. Richard saw something in the boy, courage beyond his years, shaped by hardship. You're coming with me, Richard decided. We're going to stop them. Inside the mansion, Richard and Ethan sat together, devising a plan. Richard knew he couldn't confront Sophia and Daniel outright. If they realized he was aware, they might escalate their plans. We'll let them think they've succeeded, Richard said, his jaw tightening. But when they try to claim the inheritance, we'll be ready. Ethan listened intently, nodding. He'd already risked everything. Now he was ready to see this through to the end. The next morning, Richard put their plan into action. He instructed his staff to prepare his departure for a supposed business trip, telling Sophia he'd be gone for several days. Take care of yourself, she said with a soft smile, masking the calculation behind her eyes. Richard returned the sentiment with practiced ease, his face betraying none of the turmoil within. Once out of sight, he picked up Ethan, and together they drove to a secluded area to execute the staged accident. At a prearranged spot, Richard and Ethan worked quickly. Richard had arranged for a specialist to assist in making the scene look authentic. They disabled the car and placed controlled incendiary devices to ensure it would burn completely, leaving no identifiable remains. Ethan, watching Richard's precise movements, couldn't help but feel a mix of awe and fear. The fire engulfed the car in moments, its flames lighting up the early morning sky. The sight left Ethan silent, the weight of the plan sinking in. Back at the mansion, the news spread quickly. A charred vehicle matching Richard's car had been found with no survivors reported. Sophia received the news with a feigned gasp of shock, though her subtle relief didn't go unnoticed by Ethan, who remained in the background, observing every move. He's really gone, she whispered to Daniel later that evening. Now we just wait for the inheritance. Two days later, Sophia and Daniel arrived at the lawyer's office to finalize the paperwork. Both wore masks of mourning, though their true emotions simmered beneath the surface. They exchanged knowing glances as the lawyer began the formalities. However, their confidence wavered as he read a new clause Richard had added to his will. In the event of suspicious circumstances surrounding my death, my wife and immediate family will be excluded from the inheritance. Sophia's calm facade cracked. This this must be a mistake, she stammered. Daniel, equally rattled, tried to intervene, but their attempts to discredit the clause fell flat. 
Suddenly, the door to the office opened. Richard walked in, alive and well, with Ethan by his side. The room fell silent as Sophia and Daniel stared in disbelief, their schemes unraveling before their eyes. Sophia and Daniel froze, their carefully crafted plans dissolving in an instant. Richard's calm yet piercing gaze bore into them, the weight of betrayal heavier than any words he could muster. Surprised to see me? he asked, his tone steady, masking the anger and disappointment that churned within. Sophia opened her mouth to speak, but no words came. Daniel, visibly shaken, muttered weakly, It's not what it looks like, Richard. I can explain. Richard held up a hand, silencing them. Don't bother. I know everything. I trusted both of you, one as my wife, the other as my brother. And this is how you repay me? His voice grew firmer, laced with the hurt of a man betrayed by those closest to him. He gestured to the lawyer, who signaled the waiting officers. Two policemen stepped into the room, cuffs ready. Sophia's mask of composure shattered. Richard, please, we can fix this. I didn't mean for it to go this far, she pleaded, her voice rising in desperation. Richard shook his head. You meant every word, Sophia. You and Daniel both. But your greed has cost you everything. The officers moved forward, securing both of them as they protested in vain. Ethan, standing quietly by Richard's side, watched the scene unfold with a mix of relief and sadness. For him, justice was served, but it came at a steep emotional cost. Later back at the mansion, Richard sat with Ethan. You saved my life, Richard said, placing a hand on the boy's shoulder. You've earned more than my gratitude. You've earned a family. Richard offered Ethan a chance to build a new life, free from the struggles of the streets. Ethan, overcome with emotion, nodded, vowing to honor the trust placed in him. As they began their new chapter together, the story left a poignant message. True family isn't defined by blood, but by loyalty and love. What would you have done if you were in Ethan's position? Share your thoughts in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you.